So if November 2nd comes along and I've passed, I hope my family is still proud of me and the choices I made. And if November 2nd comes along and I'm still alive, I know that we'll just still be moving forward as a family, like out of love for each other and that that decision will come later. When people criticize me for not, um, not like waiting longer or, you know, whatever they've decided is best for me. <laughs> um, it hurts because really I risk it. I risk it every day, every day that I wake up. And I do it because I still feel good enough and I still have enough joy and I still laugh and smile with my family and friends enough that it doesn't seem like the right time right now, but um, it will come because I feel myself getting sicker. It's happening each week. I still get out and do what I can. I walk with my husband, I walk with my family and my dogs. Um, and things like that bring me the greatest um, feelings of health that I have these days. Um, but really it's been just since January 1st, since my diagnosis, it's like, uh, health-wise, things keep just getting worse. But I guess that's what happens when you're terminally ill, is you get sicker and sicker. It sounds so cliche, we take things one day at a time, but it's like, it's, that's the only way to get through this. Um, you take, a, take away all of the material stuff, all the nonsense that we all seem to latch onto as a society and you realize that those moments are really what matter. So the worst thing that could happen to me is that I wait too long because I'm trying to seize each day but that I somehow have my autonomy taken away from me by my disease because of the nature of my cancer. So to really talk to you about the most terrifying aspects. Most recently my most terrifying set of seizures was about a week or so ago. I had two in a day, which is unusual. And I remember looking at my husband's face at one point and thinking, I know this is my husband, but I can't say his name. And um, ended up going to the hospital for that one. It's a weird feeling to wake up every day and be in my body because it feels so different than it did just a year ago. To be perfectly candid, in the last three months, I've gained over 25 pounds and over nothing I've put in my mouth except for prescription medications. I don't like being photographed, I don't like being filmed, and I, I don't like spending a lot of time looking in the mirror. And I'm not full of self-hate or loathing. It's just that my body has changed so quickly you really kind of stop recognizing yourself in a way, and that's very personal. But I think sometimes people look at me and they think, well, you don't look as sick as you say that you are. Um, which hurts to hear because when I'm having a seizure and I can't speak afterwards, I certainly feel as sick as I am. It's not my job to tell her how to live and it's not my job to tell her how to die. It's my job to love her through it. Well, if all my dreams came true, I would somehow uh, survive this. But um, I most likely won't. So beyond that, I am. Um, Having been an only child for my mother, I want her to recover from this and not break down, you know, not suffer from any kind of depression. And my husband is such a lovely man. I want him to, um, you know, I understand everyone needs to grieve, but I want him to be happy. So I want him to have a family. And I know that might sound weird, but 
And there's no part of me that wants him to live out the rest of his life just missing his wife. So I hope he uh, moves on and becomes a father. My goal, of course, is to influence this policy for positive change, um, and I would like to see all Americans have access to the same health care rights. But beyond that public policy goal, my goals really are quite simple, and they mostly do boil down to my, my family and friends, and making sure they all know how important they are to me and how much I love them. Mm -hmm.